Hey you guys, welcome back to Michael Clareda Arts. Today we're going to be um, doing a short uh, overview, uh, review slash review of a product that was sent to me by a company called Sense Labs. Um, they manufacture tablets, pretty simple. And we're going to be mashing up um, a review with some drawing. Uh, one of the things about this channel is, you know, I don't ever want it to turn into a review channel. There are so many other guys that do it 10 times better than I do. And ultimately, at the end of the day, you know, I don't really want to compete with them. You know, my channel is about drawing. It's about drawing and creativity and that process of learning and understanding what it means to be a professional artist or even a hobbyist that is continually developing um, their process. And with that, uh, occasionally, and this is, uh, you know, hopefully going to continue. Occasionally, I'll be working in some product reviews for you guys of products that I think are really applicable to what we do. You know, um, recently I reviewed a 3D printer and prior to that, I reviewed a screen tablet. And, you know, prior to that, I've done some other screen tablets and, um, you know, I've done some other uh, reviews of uh, traditional art products from pencils to markers to peripheral items, you know, such as quick key remotes and, and whatnot. And they all add to that universe, that tool belt that we're constantly developing as artists, um, digital illustrators, or people that uh, create things. Um, that being said, Sense Labs uh, contacted me and they're like, hey, you know, we saw your YouTube channel. We really like how you review products and how you incorporate a practical real world, um, uh, you know, a real world moment of drawing into the uh, to the review process. Because a lot of people and a lot of review people on YouTube, they'll get the device, they'll unbox the device they'll draw on it very briefly, but they won't give a real world, real time um, experience. And that's one of the things that I always wanna focus on. These products are designed specifically for drawing. And if they don't do that really, really, really well, then, you know, they don't, they don't really measure up uh, to something that I would recommend. So that being said, Zen Slabs, huh, I want to say Zen Slabs because it's an X, but I'm pretty sure it's Sense Labs. So if I mess it up, my apology, let's say Sense Labs. Okay, so this is the product that they sent me right here, their medium tablet bundle. And it's got the tablet, which I believe is about 16 inches, 16, nine aspect ratio, which is uh, like a cinema display. And then you have the two tablets. You have the, or not tablets, you have the two pens. You have the slim pen, and then you have the wide pen, both with erasers, both use wireless technology. And then we have the wireless remote. So I love coming in cold. <laughs> that means I'm coming into the device as what I would refer to as a layman. And I did it similar to whenever I put together the 3D printer uh, in the last video I did. But a layman, somebody that comes into this not having a whole heck of a lot of knowledge, um, either to set it up or understanding, you know, what really, um, you know, what are all the ins and outs? I want things to be clear whenever I buy the product. Even though I might have a, a rudimentary knowledge of what the product is, and in this case, it is not a screen tablet, nor is it a computer. And that's very, that's got to be very clear. And it was very clear whenever they contacted me. This is what would be referred to as a standalone tablet on the side, and then you would have your computer, and you would draw on the tablet on the side, and then all the input from that device goes over to your computer. Um, there is a disconnect whenever it comes to learning this particular process. Uh, this is how I started out, you know, uh, back in college, and then we moved in, I, I got a studio job, and these were the tablets, um, you know, this particular form factor being a set, a, a standalone, you know, it's like a five by eight, or a 12 by 14, or something like that, and you would draw on it on the side like this, and then you would be seeing what you were drawing. Now, it takes, for me, I always, whenever I've trained people, I said, okay, it might be awkward, but it's, it's first, it's very effective, and once you get used to the form factor, drawing on the side or drawing in front of you, then, you know, being able to see things in front of you as you draw, it takes about a week and a half to two weeks to get used to. And after that, you're perfectly good. Is it the best form factor? 
I think for some people it is, you know, for some people it, it just works. You know, I did it for about eight years and, you know, whenever I transitioned over to the larger draw on your screen type uh, devices, it was a natural trans, it was a natural uh, progression, was natural, you know, going over because of course, you know, we, whenever we draw on regular paper, we're seeing what we're drawing instantaneously. So that being said, this particular device is one of the stand, you know, the stand on your side draw on tablets. Um, 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity, the wireless uh, technology similar to XB Pen, Wacom, and some of those other companies that use this technology. You can be plugged in via USB-C, uh, and I believe the wireless technology is a dongle, or you can do uh, the wireless, like I said, wireless um, for, uh, you know, for the tablet. So instead of me sitting here talking about it, let's go ahead and get into the unboxing really quick, because... You guys know how I love unboxings. Actually, I don't like them that much <laughs> because even though I like unboxing stuff for myself, explaining what I see, you know, a lot of times I think is another layer that, you know, you just want to get into it and start using it. Okay, so this is the beautiful packaging. I really love, I'm a package guy, so you can definitely tell whenever a company pays attention to design language. I love the clarity of what it is. I love the printing, uh, you know, the fonts, it's really good, it's clear. You know, you look on the back and you can see, you know, all of the specifications, um, you know, and what it comes with. It, it lists everything that it comes with uh, on the bottom here, you know, from what it is to the quick key remotes, you know, it gives some of the uh, little icons and numbers and stuff. So the design language is very clear, which I thought was really cool. And then to get it out, you take the plastic off and then it slides out of the sleeve right here, the sleeve. <clears throat> and then it looks like, okay, let's go around here. Yeah, okay. So then it opens up a clamshell, a clamshell. So you are greeted with this wonderful thank you. Thank you for ordering. And then you flip it over and it basically shows you exactly what it is. So it's got the tablet right here, the two pens, the quick key remote, and via connection right into your host machine, which would be a standalone an all-in-one, a laptop, or something that you can see what you're drawing. Quick start. And this is kind of the new, I don't want to say new way of doing things, but it kind of is <laughs> with iPhones, with Samsung phones, and some of the other current smartphones. All you have to do is point the camera at it. It recognizes this little icon, and it takes you to the uh, quick start for the device. And you can go to the website. You can see what it is, quick start, and then you register your warranty. And if you have any issues, of course, you can go on and, uh, you know, probably talk to a live person depending on how they're set up. So that's pretty cool. <clears throat> and then, of course, you're greeted with the tablet itself. Whenever I got this device, I noticed how heavy it was. Just the overall girth uh, weight of the device itself was pretty significant and I thought man that weighs a lot for something that is just you know kind of plasticky and then I got to looking at it and I'm like wait a minute is this metal so let's go ahead and open her up get in here and it tells you don't do all of this and by the way you can recycle at the very end so let's go ahead and open this up this is metal right here I believe it feels like metal and this is all composite so this is the live area right here this is where you're going to be drawing it does come with three quick keys one two three and it's of course is black one of the things that I notice immediately and, and this is just from experiencing a lot of these tablets um, recently um, yeah it is metal <clears throat> it's it's very well made 
it's, I mean, we're talking like next level well-made. Whoever designed this and the design language uh, definitely understands uh, what they're doing. It's got little rubber pads so it doesn't skid across the table whenever you're utilizing it. It's got a curve on the bottom right here. It's flat and then it curves on the bottom. So whenever you're drawing, it doesn't have that lip, that hard lip that hurts your wrist because if you're drawing for 8, 10, 12 hours, 15 hours, 5 days, 7 days a week, eventually that lip is not going to be your friend. And then to move it, it's got these little handles. Now I want to call them a handle. Just like a little indention right here. So if you need to move it, instead of having to drive something under there, it is raised. So all these little elements, and then of course it's got the name brand right there. Instead of being printed, it's debossed into the composite. Then there's looks like there's a lock on here, or that actually is the power button. Yep. So you slide on the power button, and now she's wireless. So that, And it's looking for the Bluetooth uh, host device right now. You can see that. So we're going to go ahead and turn that off. We're going to hold it. And it turns off. And there's the, looks like the charge port right here. Okay, so let's get rid of that for a moment. We'll explore a little bit deeper. Wow, okay. So right off the bat again, the cardboard is not cheap. This is packaging at its finest. I mean, I would equate this right up there with Microsoft and Apple. Um, definitely uh, up there with Wacom. Really soft, but also sturdy cardboard. I knew this was in here. <laughs> this is the carrying sleeve. So let's go ahead and open this up really quick. Let's get that out of the way. This is what the tablet would go into Oh, that sound. If you, very soft. I mean, we're talking velvety smooth velour. Not velour, but velvety smooth. I mean, really soft. The only thing that I would equate this to is I owned a Cintiq Companion, and uh, it came with a sleeve as well, and it was just as soft as this. So, you would take your handy dandy uh, Sense Lab uh, tablet, and you would slide this in. Whew in its little protective home, and you would close it. Very nice. I'm not really sure what material this is. It's probably some type of uh, nylon composite, and it's got a little screen print on there for Sense Labs. Very nice, and it's padded. So again, let's put that to the side. Now we're looking at the peripheral items. So let's go over here. This is the black box. The black box. Let's go ahead and open this. Slide this out. Okay, put that to the side. So we have your USB-A to USB-C. Then we have a, again, a USB-C to a USB-A. I believe this is, looks like it's 90 degree. I'm not really sure why that would be there. I'd be perfectly happy with that. We will investigate that. Put that to the side. Drawing glove to add to my huge collection. I'm not going to dance. <laughs> like some of the other YouTubers do. So let's get in. Okay, here's the quick key remote. So once again, let's go to our handy dandy pocket knife. I'm always very cautious, always cutting away. I watch people that do like this, and they're like, yeah, yeah, and then you're going to accidentally stab yourself in your hand. Trust me, I've done it a lot. I know exactly, it's like right before your brain knows that you're doing something wrong, and then you stab yourself in the hand. <laughs> so that would be no good. Okay. So let's go ahead and open this quick key remote. Wow. This is beautiful. Wow, I am speechless. Rubberized backing, same design language from the ecosystem that the SenseLab tablet is from. It's got those little side grips. Then it's got all the quick keys. It's got a rotation wheel. And this is probably as you scroll through the different prompts, you can, you can select which quick keys that you want. Because there's one, two, three, four, so there's eight, and it might go through different prompts. 
to have different levels, just similar to the XP pin. This is amazing. This is a beautiful device. There's an LCD screen here. So I wonder how you turn it on. So let's go ahead and hit that. Go. Oh, same design language as the tablet right there. Turn it on. Comes on. It's looking for that Bluetooth dongle. Look at how beautiful color coordinated. Please connect the computer and install the driver. Very cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and turn that off, which we will do here in a moment. Beautiful. Let's put you to the side. Looks like you get... <gasps> There's a sticker. Oh my gosh, is this a sticker? <gasps> for those of you who've been with me for a while, you know that I love stickers. I'm a sticker person. And it does come with, <coughs> excuse me, the warranty information, which again, you know, is pretty cool. It says warrants original purchaser. Let's see, 24 months for tab pen tablets, 24 months for pins and accessories, excluding consumables. A consumable would be a pin nib. So let's go ahead and open this up. Plastic these days, guys, is ridiculous. It is almost impervious to human <laughs> to, to human beings. Just, oh, it's so hard to get into pretty much anything. And that's, that has nothing to do with Sense Lab. They're trying to make sure that they cover their bases and their products are safe in transport. I get that. I just, plastics in general, especially on toys. I deal with a lot of toy packaging. Wow. Okay, so first off the bat, wow, what a wonderful, wonderful packaging. Again, the same, you got to understand, it's got the same black tone as the remote, the same black tone as the tablet. That's big. So let's go ahead and open it. There is a magnet, which is really cool. Wow, rubberized, very similar to the current XP pin that I just reviewed, but also, you know, very similar to the Wacom. You know, this is, man, what a wonderful, just top notch, nice weight to it. Very well, very good quality. Man, just a very, very nice, got an eraser on there. And the fact that they're including two pins. You know, I know uh, XP Pen used to include two pens. I know that um, that Wacom offers a slim pen with their devices, but you have to pay extra for it. And it looks like there's a this is a three button pen and this is a two button pen. This is a rocker right here, and this is a button and a rocker. So that's pretty significant. And then you have the nib remover, and then of course you have the nibs themselves. This, these look to be felt nibs. And these look like your standard uh, black nibs. And then you have your, your dongles right here, which if your device only has USB-C, then obviously this is going to help you out because one of my computer only has, actually no, my computer has both. And this looks like it's the dongle for the, um, the remote because that is USB Bluetooth. Okay, let's look at the pin. Right off the bat, the weight, it does have some heft to it. It's not like cheap, chintzy junk. And it's rubberized, which is really cool. And it's tapered. One of my complaints, my chief complaints of the current um, XP pin device that I just received was that the uh, taper, it came to such a, it, it was, came to such an abrupt end here and then it went in and it was kind of bulbous at the end. This has more of a taper to it, which is nice. And this pin right here reminds me a lot of the Hewlett Packard pin that I had with my X, with my ZBook uh, X2G4, very similar. It's actually thinner. So you would obviously use this if you prefer a slimmer, more trimmed down version of the pin. So that is, so satisfying whenever it goes in, whenever I don't have something. And that's metal. That's not plastic. That's metal right there. That's metal. So I'm, I'm pretty stoked so far.
And this is pretty much everything that was in the box. There was, you know, obviously the packing material and the warranty information. But this is the bulk of what was in there. Of course, we have the quick start guide, we have the pin, the quick key remote, then we have the peripheral cables, the glove, the tablet itself, the storage sleeve, and the sticker. Okay, so I have downloaded the Sense Lab driver from their website, and we're going to go ahead and go through the prompts. See that I had a little connection issue there. Yes, I've read the necessary installation documents already. And today I'm connecting this to a Lenovo Yoga. 920. It's got the eighth generation i7 with eight gigs of RAM, a SSD, and two gigs of video uh, RAM, just to give you some context of what kind of machine you can hook this up to. Now, I'm sure that you can hook it up to other machines, and I have many other machines from Macintosh to Windows, and I'm sure that it's cross-platform. Um, they also had a Linux driver, so I'm sure that you'll be covered Let's do guided setup just for ease of use. These devices have been detected on your system. Okay, so let's scan for devices. That, that has been detected. Oh, nice, so I don't have to really do anything. Okay, tablet buttons, launch, adjust pressure telling me what it can and can't do. Here's the pressure tip customization. Default, it's kind of in the middle if you want heavy or if you want a soft tip. Down on the right, down at the top. Hmm. So basically, here's the device. You can see I have this plugged in currently because I wanted to charge it, but I'm sure that because it's green, it says please connect the computer and install the driver, okay. So you can see the Bluetooth light is on, so let's go ahead and, um, probably that's fine, dial on the right, and I can change that afterwards. It says applic application custom settings. Similar um, to one of the other devices that I have, which is the Tourbox Neo. Torbox Neo does this, where you custom program different applications and it auto senses whenever you launch the application and it will remember your quick key setup so you don't have to go in and program it every single time, which is really nice. <clears throat> and then it wants to automatically take me to the registration, which I will do, but we'll do that afterwards. So, okay, so it automatically connected. Now I did plug in the dongle right here to the USB-A port on the side of my Lenovo and then it automatically detected pin at 74%, three button pin, thin pin, and the quick key remote currently is at 80%. And whenever the driver launched this application window, it's got an LCD screen that shows everything. So that's really cool. Let's go ahead and put you up there for now. Let's go to the pen tablet and we will break out one of the pens. So let's go ahead to the larger pen right here and we'll close that up and we'll keep the, and there it is right there. So that's really cool. I mean, I basically launched the driver and I didn't have to do anything else. Okay, so I can also customize the colors. You can see that the tablet itself has colors. So my favorite color is green, and I change the colors. Let's go to bright. So they're really bright. This shows the actual live area that you will be utilizing whenever you draw. So if you go past that, it probably also senses and pairs up with the device via the video card. The aspect ratio, now this I believe is um, letter, not letterbox, it is uh, 16 by 9 uh, aspect. Um, and, oh wow, so it automatically, look, it sensed that I had 
Adobe Illustrator, uh, multiple versions of Photoshop, and Clip Studio Paint. So that's really cool. I can adjust the pressure of the tablet. Precision mode, it's got a bunch of modes in here that I can go into and adjust. I can change the modifiers for the quick keys up here pretty easily. Okay, so for the three button pin, I like my brush a little bit heavier and that's called a global setting. So let's go ahead and go back, Photoshop. So let's do that one because that's, I believe the newer one. Let's go a little bit heavier and you can change the settings of the buttons, which is really cool. So Illustrator, let's keep it at the global setting and Clip Studio Paint. Again, let's keep that right around there. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and see how she drives. Okay, so I adjusted the setup just slightly so I can have a little bit better lighting. And as you see, uh, under these lighting conditions, some of the fingerprints that are left on the device um, don't get rubbed out too easily. And I'm not really an oily guy. I'm pretty dry. As you can see, I'm not really leaving a lot of fingerprints. So in that respect, it's pretty good. But just remember, if you are, uh, if you do have oily skin, um, you will be able to see the fingerprints uh, on this matte finish. Okay, so I've got the quick key remote all set and ready. So let's go ahead and get into Photoshop. I had done an initial sketch in Clip Studio Paint, but just for this application. I know a lot of people don't use Clip Studio Paint, um, so I felt like Photoshop was a better option. I went ahead and programmed in the, um, the quick keys that I like, and the way that I did that is I went into their interface, and I selected the program right here. You can see that I already did it for Clip Studio Paint as well. And what's really cool about this driver is it auto-senses the programs you have and it brings up the predetermined quick keys and you can change those. It's really easy to change them. You see as I scroll over each in their particular tab, it highlights on the device what uh, button I'll be changing. So like if I want to change space, I just click on it once. I can uh, bring up a, a secondary tab window and I can basically do whatever I want. So what I did is I just did a keystroke. I named it space. I clicked in there. I cleared it and then I hit space bar on my keyboard and then I hit OK and it programmed it. And you can do that for all of these. And what's really cool too is it has different sets. So if I want to add a set, you see I go over that little icon that says paint and it clicks this little uh, button on the device right here. So I'll go ahead and hit paint. And let's say I want to change brush panel. Actually color panel. So I want to click color panel and I hit keystroke. Again, if I just do full screen and then I clear out the F6 and then I hit the F key, now it is fully programmed in that particular configuration. Now if I go back, now watch, and so I hit sketch, okay, right now I'm in the sketch configuration, okay, so let's go ahead and hide this really quick, sketch configuration, cool, okay. So if I hit this button, watch, it goes over to the paint configuration. So now I have an additional eight set of quick keys for the paint configuration. So that's really handy dandy, um, you know, whenever I go and I start doing things uh, and I have a workflow going. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. My workflow <clears throat> has changed over the years and it changes a lot just based upon job, based upon program I'm working in. But I usually start out with a sketch. So let's go ahead and start out with a sketch. Let's make sure everything is good to go. Oh, oh, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to set the pressure curve. So let's go ahead and set the pressure curve. So here we go. Here's the, and, and what's really cool is it's got two pins. So I had set the pressure curve originally for the three button pin. Now I'm in the thin pin. So I can go ahead and click that down to heavy, which I like, and it auto saves. So now I've got a little bit better of a pressure curve. And if I switch back to the thick pen, then it will obviously 
change the pressure curve based upon the pen I'm using. So that's pretty sweet. So let's go ahead and start drawing. I've added a layer and the way I've set up my file image image size. I've got 300 dpi, 14 inches wide by 12 high, and it's RGB. I don't have, uh, I don't typically use CMYK unless I'm going to print it. And even in that, I usually convert, um, I convert my document. <laughs> I just like working in RGB. Now, my propensity is to go ahead and use the keyboard because I've been doing illustration, digital illustration for a while. So using a quick key remote, a lot of times I'll use it in an all-in-one and you can see this hinge right here so it actually bend it back. And I would have this quick key remote on my left hand side while I work um, if I don't have access to the keyboard. So if you see me accidentally go back up here, it's because I've got, you know, 20 years worth of, <laughs> of quick key stuff that I've been working with. And also, you see that little flicker? That is not the tablet. That is not the QuickKey device. That is not the computer. That is a anomaly that happens on PCs, um, all-in-ones, uh, or at least my understanding. Um, and it has to do with the tabs uh, in Photoshop. It's the only program that it does it in. So if I were to click this tab and go ahead and get rid of that, it doesn't flicker anymore. So I'm just doing a fun little character this morning. I'm used to drawing on the screen. So getting back into the groove of drawing on the side is going to take a little bit of time. If those of you who draw on the screen and you're used to drawing on the screen, then yeah, it will take a little bit of time to get into that groove of being able to draw off to the side, because it is a disconnect. You know, I'm used to doing this and looking and exact, you know, and, and having that, that interface, <clears throat> instantaneous feedback. Whereas this, it, it is hard. It's like closing your eyes and drawing something, if any of you guys have ever done that. It can be a challenge, but it is not impossible. This is exactly the way that I worked for years without the quick key remote, of course. I had my computer and then I had my tablet. Now, from my understanding, uh, I'm not really sure if, you know, when this is going to happen, but I am under the impression that uh, SenseLab is going to have a screened tablet, meaning an actual screen that you can draw on. And this is their uh, dip into the current marketplace. And I'm going to be honest with you guys, the, the lead-in pressure curve is amazing. It's, it, it's, it's basically exactly what Wacom has. The pressure curve is really good. There's no weirdness. It feels exactly like my 22HD with better pressure. Um, I love the roundness of the pen. That's kind of stupid. I love the feel of the pen. <laughs> I love the roundness of the roundness. Um, it's got a rubberized grip, so it's not flying out of my hand. It does abruptly, if you look, it does abruptly stop. I would like to have more of a taper, but again, that's personal preference, you know? And this being a nice size, I'm not having to work in a small area. So basically this size right here almost matches. I mean, it almost matches, you know, one to one, which is really cool. <clears throat> this is just a really simple sketch. Let's go ahead and give him... <clears throat> tail coming out. Yeah, I gotta be honest with you guys, this this tablet is really good. Oh. 
The pressure curve's good. The fit and finish is good. It's not binding up. I'm not having weird anom anomalies happen. You know, let's go ahead over to the edge. 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 So nice. And then that. There's no wobble on the diagonal. There's no wobble on the horizontal. Right? It's just a great device. I was asked to show my process. So, like, like I said, you know, my process is just basically drawing and painting. <clears throat> okay. Just a little smile here. Drawing and painting. Hmm. Give me some horns. It's down. Little tits is. Coming around. This little finger comes around here, and you got that. Sorry about that transition, guys. I must have accidentally hit the recording button on my watch, because that's kind of the remote that I have for my camera, and it stopped, um, and it didn't uh, announce me going to time lapse. So that's what I'm doing right now. It's just finalizing that sketch, um, so I can go over to you know get the, the, the final final sketch, the line work and then move into color, um, you know, as I show the process of illustration on this particular device. The workflow is great. I mean, having that remote right there, having, um, you know, the device to the right-hand side and having that screen, you know, all these form factors uh, really cater to the illustration experience. I'm so used to drawing on the screen. Um, you know, this was a little bit of a, a challenge, but Everything comes back. You know, it's like riding a bike. Everything comes back, especially when you did it for so many years. Uh, like I said in the beginning of the video, like eight years, eight or nine years, I worked on a device, you know, like the one you see here, um, the tablet, that medium tablet. So I'm very excited for Sense Labs to see what uh, they're going to come out with next. So let's get on to, um, you know, the illustration process and explanation. Okay, so this is the sketch. <laughs> I told you it takes a little bit longer than what you expect. Um, and uh, one of the things that I believe I knew existed uh, for this particular device, uh, it does support, uh, I believe, 60 degrees of tilt. So let's go ahead and turn on the angle jitter, um, pin tilt, and there it is. So for those of you who are on the fence about getting um, this device and, and were like, oh, well, I don't know about tilt, Yes, it does support tilt, which is pretty awesome. Um, so, that being said, I just wanted to throw that in there for you guys. I'm getting ready to go ahead and go to uh, final um, line work. And again, I'll put you guys on time lapse because we're looking at probably about 45 minutes um, for the line work. And then once the line work's in, then I'll bring you guys back and we're going to talk about color. So far, um, the Sense Lab Medium Tablet, their first foray into the tablet market, it is a winner winner chicken dinner. I love it. It is really good. I mean, the form factor, the interface, you know, the pins, the pressure curve the you know the price i remember back in the day whenever i bought my my little 
it wasn't even a bamboo. It was just like a 6.8 tablet or 5 point whatever. And I think I paid $140 for it back in the day made by Wacom. And, you know, this is years and years ago. And then whenever I went and bought my HD, my big HD tablet, that was almost $2,000. <laughs> so you can see there's a huge price differential, um, you know, whenever they start getting into the bigger tablet uh, form factor. You know, I'm, I, it, dude, let's, let's be real for a second. If Sense Labs comes out with a tablet, I'm probably going, I mean, a big, you know, draw on tablet, I'm probably going to buy it. I mean, if it's like eight, nine hundred dollars, I'm going to find a way to buy it. <laughs> um, just wonderful, 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 wonderful device. You know, and, and I, I, I watched a review um, recently that was talking about, you know, how the last time Wacom updated their, their pro line, you know, they were really ahead of the curve. They had 4K screens, they had touch, you know, they had their, their pressure curve, you know, over 8,000 levels. And it hasn't been updated since 2017. So other companies have really had a chance to catch up. And, you know, maybe Wacom's going to come out with 40,000 levels of pressure sensitivity. But, you know, in that time, you've had your iPad Pro that has really risen. Then you have your XP Pen, which is really, gosh, they're not even the same company anymore, XP Pen. And then you have companies like SenseLab, which is coming out with solid devices at, at lower price points, you know, and then of course Huion. I, I have, my experience with Huion is, is not good because one of my students um, at the college had a Huion tablet and he couldn't get it to work and it fell apart right in front of me. And I mean, the pen was falling apart, everything was falling apart. And I'm like, how long have you had this device? Oh, about six months. So I'm looking at it. Of course, everybody takes care of their stuff a little bit different. But man, the Huion device was falling apart. I couldn't believe it. You know, and then I directed him to the XP Pen people. Uh, this is, of course, before the Sense Lab came out. You know, I got to be honest, dude. You know, people come to me today and what's the best value uh, tablet? You know, it all depends, of course, on you as a worker and what you're going to be doing. But if you need a budget-minded, non-drawing-on-the-screen tablet for the money, I think SenseLab is a great option for those people. You know, it's a, it really is. So let's go ahead and get on the final. I keep messing around with the sketch. Let's get on with the final um, line work, and then I'll move into value, and then I'll move into color, and then we'll wrap up uh, in the end. Uh, with, uh, with a little bit of talking. So, all right, let's get busy.
Okay, so I decided to go ahead and stop here um, just to show you guys where I'm at. I've pretty much finalized the line work, and as you see, I've changed my setup uh, just a little bit because I was noticing as I was drawing on the right-hand side and I had my hand cocked over here to the left-hand side, it was causing a little bit of wrist pain. So now I've got the SenseLab tablet in front, and I've got my all-in-one uh, folded back. Uh, in front of me so I have a little bit better of a connection and I'm not getting a lot of that wrist pain <laughs> comes with the territory I guess so um, as you see I've got two layers I've got my kind of my final sketch layer right here and I've got my initial sketch layer right there now unlike a lot of people out there I actually leave a little bit of my sketch in there because I've noticed that it leaves a little bit more life. And that's your preference. You can do whatever you want. Um, but for me, I like to leave a little bit of that sketch uh, left in there. So this is basically the final sketch. Here's the initial sketch. I'm going to go ahead and put in some eye shine because it helps me whenever I'm doing the piece. Gives it a little bit more life. As I'm going through a little bit over here maybe her name is Violet <laughs> and she likes sitting in the meadow she likes sitting in the meadow um, so this is kind of where I'm at uh, as I progress through the illustration I'm fixing to go ahead and put in now there's a couple ways that you can do this you can go in and start putting in local color and then you add the shadows after some people will actually do full grayscale and then add the colors last as an overlay or a multiply and then go in from there um, it just depends on how I feel and what I'm doing and depends on what the client is asking for if they need color studies if they need value studies if they need light studies but for this I'm just doing it you know as uh, as a progression to show the, you know the capabilities of this tablet I'm probably just going to put in local color and then local color being the color that doesn't have any uh, lighter shadow on it and then after that uh, so let's go ahead and I'll put that's 32 percent so then I'll go ahead and start putting in local color um, and I'll show you guys you know how I'm going to do that for color blocking what I like to use Go ahead and switch back on our handy dandy remote. Undo. I like to use this brush. It's kind of like a pressure, just a real simple pressure brush that doesn't have any texture on it. It's real nice. It's going to be a very colorful illustration. So I'm just block, literally blocking in some of the color and anything that I don't cover up, I can just basically uh, copy that layer layer merge down and it makes it more opaque instead of giving it like a watercolory feel and in this particular stage you can really just have some fun you can give it texture you can you know very loose you're just basically blocking in kind of color by number situation um, if you watch like here I'll just block in those leaves maybe some of this greenery and then I've got these brown trees, so I'll come back and I'll block in maybe a mid-tone, a mid-value, hue, a mid-hue, brown. Not getting too detail -y yet, just because this is kind of like a painterly piece. And I want her to be really brilliant and bright. And you can use layers, I'm just blocking everything on one layer right now. And then what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll put another layer on top and I'll just start fixing some of these spots where I've kind of overshot, like right here. Um, whoops, undo. Yeah, like right here. Just really fast. You know, I'm not looking to make super detail -y stuff just yet. You know. working basically the way I paint, which is from the back forward. And then 
I'll start working like back forward. So that means, yeah, I blocked in my green hue, and then I'll start, um, you know, putting in some of the lighter value or the, some of the lighter hues back here. So lighter values here. So then we'll start just blocking stuff in. And it is on pressure. So as you see, as I overlap stuff, I'll get a little bit different. A little bit lighter. So then we'll come here, we'll go a little bit blue. Blue. Really fast, really fun. You know, and I'm using the slim pen. I've noticed this pen right here, even though great, it is big and uh, it's got that nice rubber grip, but it is silicone. So silicone, you know, it's, it's, it is very soft and, and supple, but it is, I don't want to say slippery, but it's kind of, it's got like a greasy feel to it. It's hard to describe, maybe silky smooth. Whereas this one doesn't really have that. It's kind of, you can hear it. If you can hear it, it's got that grippy feel, which I really like. Okay, image her. Let's go ahead and put her on a different layer. I want her to be purple. Now, in color theory, obviously, it, it benefits you to understand how colors interact with each other, you know, but to make things pop, typically you have their complement. <clears throat> You know, complementary colors. So with that purple, she's going to bounce off of that green. She's going to be really beautiful. She's like a pig creature. Pig creature. So. Let's get you back on time lapse. We'll block in the color. And then we'll start the rendering process, which includes values, special effects, lighting you know, highlights and everything else. So, let's get started. Okay, so I'm at that point in the illustration where I'm going to start putting in light and shadow. I haven't really landed on texture um, for uh, the creature, um, but I want to go ahead and start putting in some of these light and shadow values. And how I do that is I've got 
my shadow layer um, just above my base layer and I've got a clipping mask on top of it and I've got it set to multiply transparency mode and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start blocking in the shadows and um, I've got it on pressure and I've got this particular textured brush pastel C and um, I've got my opacity um, put down to about 59 percent 60 percent and basically what I'm doing now is I'm going in my light source is going to be upper right hand side and I'm just literally going in and blocking in the shadows. I have taper off because I don't want that sharp taper stroke on there. So you can see as I'm going in, I'm just literally putting in some of those real simple values. And I'm using a purple hue um, as a cool shadow. Um, because it's a cool area that she's in. Literally just going in and placing some of these values in there to help reaffirm and establish the forms that I've, that I've created. Whoops. Accidentally selected. Okay. And then like these shapes right here increase the brush and I like the texture on there and I'm going to show you here in a second I'm going to change brushes but I do like putting in that texture and a lot of times you'll see me I'll zoom out just to get a better balance and right now everything's pretty even I don't have a lot of contrast and that's okay because as I work in, I'm going to start pushing and pulling some of those values. So I'll pull her and the foreground out a little bit more as I put in these shadows. And I'm going to put in some highlights here in just a moment. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and I'll put some shadows on her. Same, same uh, idea here. We're adding a layer clipping mask. We're switching it over to multiply. I still have my opacity down so let's make sure yeah okay <clears throat> my computer is lagging a little bit I'm not really sure why I just started it up so I was probably going through its security protocols that Microsoft Windows goes through scanning everything bogging the machine down this is one of the reasons why I don't have a PC as my main machine because of the fact that even though it does all these security measures it does them and it steals system resources so that's one of the things that you have to remember when you work on a PC Macs do the same thing but their operating system is structured in such a way that it does it to where you can't really notice it you know not every machine is completely infallible. Not every tablet is perfect. You know, this, this particular tablet, the Sense Lab uh, medium tablet, so far has been a winner. I, I have been very impressed with how it has performed. And honestly, if I was in the market for a tablet like this, I would definitely appreciate a honest review because I'm not getting paid I'm not getting paid for this review here we go going in and just putting in some of those shadow values and you know let's go ahead and have that top shadow come down right there and you know in the context of what this illustration is supposed to be, which is really an exercise in showing you, you know, the proper the qualities of this tablet. I'm not going in and rendering it to its utmost, <laughs> you know, 
possibilities here. But I just wanted to make sure and get it covered. And putting you guys on time lapse is one of the ways that I can actually make the image look pretty good because, you know, art takes time. Illustration takes time. Especially, you know, one like this that I, I, I want to have different aspects, lighting, texture, characterization. Let's go back, increase. I'm starting to put in some of these values. It's a weird dimming thing that's going on. I'm not really sure why I'm doing that. I don't know if you can see that. Ah, the wonderful world of computers digital illustration. Sometimes you just throw your arms up and say, oh well. Yeah, there's that blinking again. Let's go full screen. <coughs> Let's go back. Taper should be on. What is going on here? No, it's on. Brush was too big. It doesn't like it whenever I do certain things. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't like that. And again, these are just the shadows. You know. Okay. Let's go ahead in the background. Turn that taper off. bit of texture here and there. Not too much because again we're off in the distance. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to address that here in just a moment. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's turn that taper back on. And a lot of times less is more. You know I've said that on my channel before in the different drawings that I do. Getting in there and, and doing the same treatment and texture to the entire illustration is going to actually work against you um, you know in getting your point across because it's overstimulation you don't want to overstimulate your viewer a little bit of texture here and then I'm gonna do <clears throat> excuse me because I know I need a little bit of Cloud cover here. Let's go to distance. There we go. That's so pretty. Turn this around like this. I had a college professor that she did, all she did, well not all she did, but one of the things she was known for were clouds. And I always like, oh, pfft, clouds, whatever. And, you know, I actually kind of poo-pooed what she did, you know, me being an almighty student. And then later on in life, I realized how incredibly talented she was because clouds are not an easy thing to get emotion out of and color and she was wonderful at it. I can remember and see her images in my brain <clears throat> and she was just so good. You know, don't ever look at something and think that it's easy because it's not, you know. Okay. Okay, let's go back to her. A little bit more on this side. A bit more of a contrast right there. Contrast right there. Make sure that my layer transparency effect is on. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put you guys on a really short time lapse to let you see me wrap this up. I'm going to put some effects in there, some different lighting, and then I'll do a wrap up in the end and explain what I did. So reflective light, bounced light, we'll put some blurs in there, you know. Around here. 
So I'm, I'm actually, I'm using this as a framing element. If you see, let's go back, all of this is used to frame her, right? You have that separation, that line of separation here, and you have opposing lines right here, and then you have this right here, the mountain, which again frames her, and again these rocks. So you have this line that goes like this, and then you have the rocks that go like this. And then I'm putting in darker values to help point and, and lead your eye in. That's why I'm not getting too detailed over here, because really everything needs to focus on her, because she is the subject. Okay. Actually, I'm getting a little bit too much contrast over here. Let's go back. Getting a little bit of a flicker too. What is going on? Isn't that weird? Okay. It's so weird. Okay, so let's go ahead and put you on the final time lapse and we'll do a wrap up um, in the end. Here's where I'm going to land for this one. Um, you know, illustrations like this can take hours upon hours upon hours. You can put in textures, you can put in texture maps, you can put in just so much. You can work on the sketch, you can go into shading, you know, and I can do that. I just, you know, for this particular purpose in reviewing the Sense Lab tablet, I just wanted to show you its capabilities. Now, is this a viable resource for you guys for you know if you're on a budget if you need to travel absolutely this tablet is gosh you know fit and finish quality just probably one of the best tablets that I've ever experienced um, you know the form factor you know everything even the remote I mean the remote is just legit you can sit there and scroll through and it gives you the quick keys you can program it it's got gosh you know different modes for the rotating wheel and it's got that L lcd screen which is wonderful you know it's got that pad on the back and again that form factor that you know has it's the same design as the tablet <clears throat> um and as you see in terms of pressure sensitivity in terms of usability it's definitely um, a great option for those uh, you know that can't afford these huge tablet screens that they sell now for thousands of dollars. And that's really what I wanted to show you guys today um, as far as what this tablet can do. Um, you know, for those of you that, that don't have the ability to spend thousands of dollars and you're looking to you know possibly uh, get into the digital uh, illustration market, guys, there is I'm going to be honest with you. It's like a digital artistic revolution for digital artists right now because there are so many options from your iPad to your XP Pen to your Wacom to your Huion to your Parblo to your you know your Sense Lab. You know Sense Labs getting into a saturated market and they have to look at how they're going to differentiate themselves from the other tablet makers. There's there's a few ways you can do that. You can do that with technology. Technology has not improved since basically 2015, 2016, 2017. You know, that 8,192 levels of pressure sensitivity has been the standard. You know, now you're getting into 4K screens. Now you're getting into um, bonded screens. You're getting into a lot of things that 
costs a lot of money. And as you keep pushing that envelope, it's going to push all of the companies to come out with products that are more budget minded. You know, XP Pin's really good about that. I, like I said, I don't have a lot of uh, experience with Huion. Um, but SenseLab coming into this market had to look at the landscape and say, how can we differentiate ourselves? They do it by having a solid base of technology, which is almost, actually it is, I'm going to go ahead and say it, it's as good as the industry standard, which is Wacom. Um, how are they going to do that? They're going to do it by offering products that, that feel really well, that last, that, that aren't too expensive for the user that have easy setups that offer great warranties that you know that interface with your existing all-in-ones and and sometimes you know they're making tablets now that interface with phones man what a what an incredible time this is for the digital artist um, you know as somebody that's been in the profession for over 20 years and I've been on a lot of tablets from you know like I said from Wacom to XP pen uh, you know, and, and experiencing Huion, um, Sense Lab is right up there with the industry standard, guys. It's really good. Um, and I'm sure that everybody else that uses this tablet says the same thing. It's really good. It draws really well. It's great. And I am so excited to see what they're going to come out with um, for their next swing. You know, their whatever, if it's going to be the electronic show this year, uh, if they're going to announce, you know, uh, a new tablet, uh, a screen tablet. I'm going to be honest, like I said before, if they come out with a screen tablet, I'm going to find any way that I can to get a hold of that uh, so I can review it for you guys. But this particular product, based upon what I see, and it's not just the tablet, it's the entire package. It's like it's the tablet, it's the interface, it's the design, it's the way it works. It's the way the products feel, you know, we, we as, as human beings, we're tactile creatures, so we, we feel things and we know quality when we see it. It's got a heft to it, it's a weight, it's called perception of value, and Sense Lab knows what they're talking about and they know what they're doing. So that being said, hopefully you like the illustration. I never want to show a product unless I get down deep into it and I actually use it. Having a line test is great and I'm sure that it does, you know, you know I showed that it does a line test pretty well. Uh, as far as I can see, I mean it draws. Um, I didn't have any hiccups at all and that to me starts building what we refer to as brand loyalty. You know, that's why Wacom has had such success in the market. You, you know, your industry professionals go into the studio and they use these Wacom products and they last for 10 years. And then they're like, why would I go and buy something that is substandard and it's not going to last? I want something to last. And based upon what I see, you know, and the fact that the, most of the engineers um, and the founders of Sense Lab come from Wacom and some of the other companies. So I give this product two thumbs up and uh, definitely... Um, you know, there is a link in the description. I don't get any paid. I don't get any paid anything from that link. I just wanted it to offer you. I wanted to offer it to you to basically look at it. Look at the product. Look at the video. You know, watch other videos. You know, I never watch one video and decide. But, you know, you saw me draw this with this tablet in the time duration. You know, this took probably... Uh, this illustration, this is completely unrelated to the tablet, um, maybe about three hours, two and a half, three hours um, from start to finish. So that being said, thank you guys for visiting my channel. As always, go out and draw something beautiful today. Go create something beautiful. And if you've been drawing in the studio for weeks and weeks and weeks, don't draw today. <laughs> go out and observe life. Go out and take a walk, you know, uh, go take some pictures, go have a, you know, have a meal somewhere with friends and just enjoy life. I know we're in a different time right now. And, you know, you look around the world and you see the struggle for control. And, and it's one of those things where you just, as an artist and a creative, you want to experience life on a positive note and, um, you know, definitely make the time to do that today. So thank you guys. And like and subscribe if you like what you see. I always forget to say that. So we'll see you next time, guys. Okay?